Hi guys, Mrs. A here. Today we are looking at using the three primary trig ratios to solve for missing sides and angles in right angle triangles. So in this first example, we have a right angle triangle and we have two sides and one angle there. That's the indicator that we're going to use the trig ratios to solve for the variable. The first thing we do is label the sides hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. So to do that, you first locate the right angle, and usually we know how to do that because of the Pythagorean theorem. And then the side opposite of the right angle is always the hypotenuse, so we'll label that here. Then we locate the angle that's in the problem. So here, notice how we're not going to be using that because it's not labeled for us. The 33 degree angle on this side is the angle that's going to be used in this question. We have to label the opposite side to that angle. So here's the angle, we go straight across, and this is the opposite side to that angle. Now the last one is always the adjacent side if you do them in that order. Adjacent means next to, so the opposite is opposite of the angle in the question and the adjacent is next to the angle in the question. Now that we've labeled the three sides of the triangle, we're going to look at what's given to us in the problem. So in this problem, we see that the hypotenuse is 18 centimeters and the adjacent side is x, we're going to use that in the problem, but we're given no value on the opposite side, so we're not going to use that in this problem. We're only using the adjacent side and the hypotenuse side. Now go to your three trig ratios here, sine, cosine, tangent, and find the one that uses adjacent and hypotenuse sides. That would be the cosine ratio. So that's the one that we're going to use to solve this particular problem. You only ever use one, and each ratio uses only two of the three possible sides. So there's only one possibility for your choice. So we're going to go with cosine. We'll write down the formula. Cosine A, that's the angle, equals adjacent side divided by hypotenuse side. Now, our formula is our template for the work, so we have to follow this template when we do our next line. We're going to fill in now what we know. Cosine, the angle is 33, 33 degrees, so we'll fill that in. Equals, the adjacent side is x, and the hypotenuse side is 18. Now, at this point, we want to evaluate what we can evaluate. On the left hand side we can evaluate cosine 33 degrees. Do that on your calculator using your trig uh, function buttons. So here my calculator requires me to do cosine first and then 33 degrees. Notice how my calculator is in degree mode there. Make sure it's in degree mode and not in radian or gradient mode. So make sure you're in degree mode first because we are working in degrees here. We've got cosine 33 degrees. Some calculators you have to put 33 first and then hit cosine. So make sure that you know how to use your calculator. And here we get this number. Now for accuracy, I always say that we should keep four decimal places here. That means we're going to do one, two, three, four. Look at the six. That's the one that we're rounding. So we look next to the six, the seven pushes the six up to a seven. So when we write down this number, we write down 0 0.8387 equals x over 18. Now this is a proportion like we did with similar triangles. So to solve this proportion, we can cross multiply that 18 over to the other side and that'll get the x by itself. Let's bring our work up here. So we're multiplying 18 with the 0 0.8387, Oops. and that equals x on the right-hand side. When we multiply that, we're going to get, okay, we have 
I just want to show you the rounding here. We have 15.0966. Usually we say when we're doing side lengths, I like to keep two decimal places so we don't do to the nearest hundredth. That means we're rounding the nine. The six next to it turns the nine into a 10. So when we round this to the nearest hundredth, we get 15.1 and you can put the zero there to indicate the hundredth. So this solves this triangle. The x value is 15.10 and we'll put our units on it, centimeters. Now let's look at a similar question, but now we're finding the angle value instead of a side length, so it's slightly different. We start the same way. We label our sides. So here, this is the right angle. We look directly across and label the hypotenuse. Next, we locate the angle in the problem. That's angle A. We don't know what it is, but we're going to find out what it is. So we need to use this angle. Directly across from it is the opposite side. And then next to it, the one that's left, is the adjacent side. Take a look at what's given in the problem now. We see that the opposite side is 13 meters and the adjacent side is 36 meters and we're not given anything on the hypotenuse side, so we're not going to use that. Knowing that we're, we need to use the opposite side and the adjacent sides, we go back to our three trig ratios and we choose the appropriate ratio. In this case, we're going to use tangent because it is opposite over adjacent. So we start off with that formula. Tangent of an angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now this is our template that we need to follow to solve the problem. Let's rewrite the template with the values filled in. Tangent of the angle. Now I'm leaving A this time because we don't know what the value of the angle is. That's the unknown. Equals. Opposite side is 13 meters and the adjacent side is 36 meters. Now let's look at what we can evaluate. We can't evaluate anything here because of the variable A, but on the right hand side we can evaluate 13 over 36. So we'll punch in 13 divided by 36 and we get this long decimal again. So when we're working in the problem I want you to use four decimal places so that we can round to two decimal places with correct accuracy at the end. This means that we're going to round this one and the one next to it is a one so that one stays the same. So on the right hand side we have 0 0.3611 on the right hand side we still have tangent A. So here we need to get the A by itself. To get the A by itself we do the inverse of this operation here, which is tangent. The inverse tangent undoes the tangent on this side. So we're going to be left with A equals the inverse tangent of 0 0.3611. Now how we plug that into our calculators here. Um, on my calculator, I do the second function and then hit the tan button for the tan inverse. That's the yellow writing above the button. Your calculator might say second function. It might say inverse. So you have to pay attention with, to what um, your button says there. So for mine, I do the second function tangent. So that gives me inverse tangent first. Then I punch in the 0.3611. But your calculator might require you to do the decimal first and then hit the inverse tangent. You have to get to know your calculators. So here's our answer. Whenever we have a degree value, I always want you to round to the nearest whole number. So here, the 19, if I look next to it, it's an 8. The 8 is going to turn the 19 into a 20. So the answer here is A equals 20 degrees and that's the value of our our unknown angle there for this problem thanks for watching mrs a loves math